We are watching another high-profile murder trial, this one in New Jersey, where a father is charged with killing his six-year-old son. Jury deliberations are underway in this so-called treadmill abuse murder trial. Christopher Gregor is accused of forcing his son, Corey, to keep running on a treadmill because he thought the little boy was too fat. Surveillance images show Corey repeatedly falling off of that machine. The child's manner of death was determined to be blunt force trauma and lacerations to his heart and his liver. But the defense is disputing that. News Nation's Rich McHugh is live outside of the courthouse there in New Jersey. So, Rich, what is happening inside today? Hi, Nicole. So just about just a few minutes ago, the jury, the jury now has the case. And just a few minutes ago, the jury had a question for, for in the case. They wanted to review two videos, one of them being the infamous treadmill video. So they sat and watched it and had a few questions for the judge and others, then went back. And so they're now back in reviewing the case. Uh, the judge before that, prior to that this morning, said, look, if you do not find this defendant uh, guilty of first degree murder, there are two other charges you can consider, aggravated manslaughter or reckless manslaughter. Take a look. If you determine that the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant purposely or knowingly caused death or serious bodily injury resulting in death, you must find the defendant guilty of murder. If, on the other hand, you determine that the state has not proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant acted purposely or knowingly in causing the death or serious bodily injury resulting in death, you must find the defendant not guilty of murder. And then go on to consider whether the defendant should be convicted of the crimes of aggravated manslaughter or reckless manslaughter. Christopher Greger is accused of making the little boy run on this treadmill repeatedly because he thought he was too fat. Two weeks after the treadmill incident, Greger says son Corey woke up from a nap incoherence as he took him to the hospital where he had a seizure and ultimately died. The medical examiner at the time issued findings on the cause of death, blunt force trauma, lacerations on his liver, and also sepsis. The medical examiner did not determine how Corey died, but several months later, a forensic pathologist reviewed the case and did rule the death a homicide. Corey's mother, Bree Michelow, says she reported Gregor for abuse over 100 times, but no one took her claim seriously. Days after the child's death, Gregor was pulled over in Alcoa, Tennessee, uh, for speeding in a construction zone. He was caught on police body cam blaming his wife for the death of his son. Yesterday, the defense gave their closing arguments. Take a listen. And you just look at the facts, the science, not the superfluous stuff, the searches, the fleeing, the superfluous stuff, the science, the medicine, the medical examiner, the doctor's testimony. If you just look at that, there's only one conclusion you could make. And that's the same conclusion Dr. Baden made. Corey died from natural causes. This is not a homicide. Now, the prosecution ended the day yesterday, late into the day, with their uh, closing arguments. Let's listen to that. He was murdered by his father, the person who was supposed to protect him and take care of him the most. There's no question what he did to Corey on April 2nd, his final act of child abuse. This case is about Corey. This case is about Corey and how he became the ultimate victim of the defendant's punishment and abuse. Six-year-olds just don't die, and neither did Corey. So the jury has this case. They've had it for about two hours, and we could have a verdict at any moment today. Nicole? Rich McHugh live for us there in New Jersey. Rich, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.